Here we are. The dozen atmospheres. This is the arena. For this first game of the best of five. Here in the bottom left hand corner, the blue Protoss is currently spawning. Playing for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's Hero. His opponent in the red from Kaizi Gaming makes a noise for the Zerg player Solar. We have all three of the matchups today. No mirror. Very interesting event, after all. A little bit of everything. To make everyone happy. Well, maybe not the Terran players, but yeah. Jan wasn't playing uh, his best arc of two today. And that just happens sometimes. It's interesting that Solar decided to place his spawning pool here and not here. To cover this hole. But yeah. This matters in uh, one situation and one situation only, which is uh, two adepts get, get into your mineral line, they will stop over here, and if you have the spawning pool in this location, you will not be able to surround them, so you will lose more drones. But that's literally the only reason why you don't want this spawning pool over there. Oh yeah, and uh, in case you just didn't see, like, yeah, uh, Solar will just take his fur, because this is a ZVP, so... You never take your natural in a ZVP, if you're a deserved player. Oh, better, you take it, you take it as your fur. Is it surprising to you? I think it's not. It's always funny, every time I cast a ZVP to just... I always have to find a different way to shrug it off because it's such an obvious thing nowadays that it's just like say yeah um a solar got a spawning pool yeah because you know you you kind of need it and that's basically the same thing with a hatch block from the brothers player on the get-go on every single map maybe I, I think there's one map in which you can't really do that I don't really remember what it is, though. Parallel Altarius is pretty big. I don't think it's the one I'm thinking about. I don't really remember. Wow. <laughs> this is weird. But honestly, even on those maps in which you can't really do that, you just send a Probot from the get-go. It's, it's just so valuable for little effort at all. It stops especially creep spread for a lot of time. In the, as you can see, the Adept can get such a good amount of free scouting without really having to fear anything. Same can be said for Solar, sending his overload in to find this target over here, producing an Oracle. But it's just second Oracle, of course. And it's going to be the usual four drones, even just the three, actually. Oracle will decide not to suicide himself. To kill another drone, which is a very wise choice. But a fourth drone will indeed be killed by Udept. Actually, a fifth drone will be killed by Udept. It's, it's honestly pretty significant. Like, um, five drones might not look like a lot, but this is very early stages into the game. Like, um, to make a comparison, two drones, like three drones in the early game, are 10% of your um, economy. 10 drones at the 20th minute mark are 10% of your economy. The free drones in the early game hurt you like probably three times more than the 10 drones in the late game hurt you. Just to, to how much available larva is in the early stages, so how little is the production facilities you have available to you. And uh, oh my god, this is actually hurting so much. Yikes. And uh, of course, the um, amount of expense 
that you have to sustain earlier on is uh, much more crucial than those in the later stages. In the later stages, you use 10 drones. Oh, wow, I can't afford one extra ultra list. In the early stages, you lose 3 drones. Oh, wow, I can't afford to survive. That's, uh, that's a pretty significant difference. And right now, it's not 3 drones, it's 13. Which is honestly 10 too many. Solar will be even on workers, but Hero, right now, is not struggling behind in tech. He's keeping a lot of scanning information. He's even killing queens with oracles, isn't that? Well, at least fighting queens with oracles right now. Like, perfect information. Lowering the um, scare card that their players can be in the early stages with, uh, with the, the usual watch pushes. And uh, having a lot of tech drop down already for yourself. He's in a pretty good position right now. He's not by any means in a commanding position. He's not by any means going to win this game 100%. But he did exactly what he needed to. To keep Solar honest. And keep him from advancing to the next stages of the game. Without a little bit of struggle at least. This word will whip. But the Oversteer will get a full scouting on the main base of... Hero as well. It reaches in the making. I don't really see any drones in the production tab whatsoever. Oh, here they go. It's going to be 66 workers. Soon to be the key amount. Sixty-six drones in uh, for Zerg in StarCraft 2 is just in a month, pretty much as uh, to closing out your first mythic. In the League of Legends game, that's pretty much the same thing. It's the bare minimum you need to have to fight. And uh, right now, Solar will need to fight uh, quite a good amount of target units. And Roaches are just not the most cost efficient unit in a game. By any means. While you uh, are sending out a lot of Stalkers. A lot of force speeds are going to be used. Lots and lots of roaches and ravagers are going to make him for solar as well. Who's probably afraid of uh, some kind of a lane. While yes, Hero has a very strong army sent out. This is uh, not really looking like an old lane. This is just target arm. Oh, sorry, target uh, gateways armies. So nothing too much. Looks like solar will be making some more drones, but so many of that are shitting around right now. Oh wow, 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 wow! Yo, 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 yo! How many drones are dying right now? 13 drones dying to adepts and oracles alone on the other side of the map. Doesn't really look like the lanes were able to make it through. And in total, it's 15 drones dying. The oracles will even fly away up there. Or will they? Yeah, yeah, they will. Over here, another oracle will drop down a full arm revelation. Onto the army of solar, and yeah, right now this starts to hurt a lot. It's 36 drones killed in the first 9 minutes of this game. This is uh, not what you want to have as a Zerg player. This is honestly a very terrible position for solar. Hero is uh, getting the tech he was looking for before. The plus two ground weapons, charging coming. And Solar is uh, pretty much still trapped onto Roach Ravagers, which might be very good for surviving in the next few minutes. But after that, the story of this game will change quite a lot. Once these Raptors start to climb up in numbers, and these Hulkers are definitely not gonna win any fight over, over these uh, Roach and Ravagers. This is where they will trap a couple of those links, not much more. On the other side of the map, Solar still has one Overseer checking perfectly what is going on in the base of Hero. Solar right now maxed out on Roach and Ravagers, and a couple links to bulk it up as well. While a Hero is probably trying to look for a way to trade some supply, a big surrounding coming from Solar. But the first build will stop these roaches and ravages from getting too much done. The war prism hidden over there at the side blockers. Hero kind of losing this battle in uh, 
pretty significant way. The word prism is still alive. We'll be sending in more and more stalkers. But these immortals, man, the immortal will just not die. Right now, Solar will lose much of his supply. So will Hero. But Hero will be able to replace it much, much better than his opponent. Not quicker, just better. Solar is able to replace his lost supply at a disheartening speed, honestly, for a hero who needs to be extra careful. He might be losing this game all of a sudden due to just how Zer works. Because Larva is a difficult thing to play against. And uh, my goodness, those battles were about to eat the jackpot of their lives. Over here there's uh, quite a lot of Stalkers, they might not be able to fight it on that great But they will be buying time for the Tang Zealots and two Disruptors I was talking about before These are going to be the key units that Hero needs to fight back And now that these um, Immortals are back onto the field again It's going to be much more complicated for Solar to make something happen And if he wants to make something happen, I think this is the moment He has not been replacing drones whatsoever can the Disruptors drop down those Novas they need? It looks like they will not even need to. Because the surround of Hero with the Stalkers was pretty much perfect. Here comes a GG. And Hero with the game number one of the series. Of course, Solar will take his third. Curious Minds, not the biggest rush distance. Well, not rush distance. But biggest distance at, at all. Between um, main base, natural, and fair base, they're pretty close together. So it's not gonna be a big deal for Solar. Not as big as it is in other maps. Not Pride of Altaris, for example. I'm very curious to see if we're gonna see another Stargate game or if Hero decides to play a little more aggro this time. Not that, uh, that uh, Stargate can be aggro, Stargate definitely can be aggro. This is um, an instant warp. Uh, warp gate research. So, at a wild guess, this could not be Stargate, but this could also be a Stargate with a fast warp speed. Warp Gate, which is uh, unique. You usually just wait, you drop down your Stargate, and then you get Warp Gate. And it is indeed not a Stargate opener, and it is indeed a very aggressive opener. The Twilight Council might be looking at some uh, Gleaver Dance. Solar was not looking that fine against just the 6 steps the previous game that killed almost 15 drones. But this time, this is a different story. This is a, a well-known build order that the Zero players have pretty much figured out how to defend against. Now the answer, the question is, how Hero will be executing this and how well can Solar defend against it? There's a... No more prism yet with this, it looks like. Oh, here it is, robot facility. At this timing, like, pretty much if you see this timing for the robotic facility and you don't see the, uh, the Twilight Counter, you pretty much just blind counter it. Because you know how deadly it can be, you know how not far behind you find yourself if it's not that, if it's some kind of a uh, Zelodolin or... I don't know, let me think of something else, like some uh, just standard way of uh, clinching control of the map with observers. You just want to blind counter it, which is happening right now, Solar dropping down the Roach Warren, getting a lot of lanes on the field, getting some more Vespin Geysers, and trying to get just a good amount of units on the field to fight against the Adepts we are, which are streaming right now. For me, it's just exactly when you need the Roach Warren to stop the second shade with uh, with your watches. Yeah, that's will decide not to shade through. There's the word prism. There's no word prism? There's no word prism? Oh my goodness. You're going for an observer. Yeah, that's will shade backwards and 
I guess there's gonna be one more prism now. This is weird. Hero has been playing really weird today. It has worked out so much in his favor though that he's... <laughs> it's weird. It's honestly just weird. Let's all be honest. This is a... A weird take on the Glaive of Death timing. Because these are a lot of depths, but this is an army that pretty much wants to fight. You don't want to dance between Roaches and Links. I think you wanted to give Solar the illusion of safety. Oh well, more Roaches are popping out, so... I think it wasn't really an illusion, wasn't it? Hero trying to go into the main with a War Prism while fighting add-on with the Adepts. That's a lot of Adepts. They can still deal quite some significant damage. They will be found themselves in a surround on top of this ramp. And they will try to get another Shade in. Meanwhile, in the main, more Adepts are going to be warping in. The War Prism will live to fight another day. And over here are a million Adepts fighting against Roaches, Lings and whatever they find. Hero. Really putting up a fight, another shade goes through over here in the natural. That's so many roaches on the field. Solar is just trying to do its best to give up to take a least amount of damage possible from these deaths. Honestly, he's doing quite a good job at it. His economy is pretty much untouched. He lost a couple queens, he lost a couple roaches. But the most important thing right now is the tech. And his tech is not looking that much behind. While uh, having a lot of army to defend pretty much against anything, his economy is still pretty decent. I lost seven drones, yes, but didn't really have much to work with at all. Probably that is the biggest problem, but that would have been a problem anyway. Losing more could become a little bit problematic. He's not gonna lose more. Things are gonna try to get past the defenses of Hero and uh, get some scouting going. Hero is getting an Immortal out. He is uh, definitely a lot behind in supply. Mostly because the army of Solar is uh, very, very strong right now. He has a lot of roaches. Immortals, of course, natural counter. There's not much of roaches can do against Immortals once they are high enough in number. So. Where do we go from now on? Hero, cause uh, your attack just didn't do enough. It feels like it forced out a lot of army that you can easily deal with as the Protoss player. Cause those roaches are not gonna be that much of a threat if you have three mortars on the field. But can you be really aggressive into that? Hero thinks he can, and that's all that matters. He's sending his units in. Three tumors, of course, are gonna give a good. Scouting information to Solar, who's uh, now going past the defenses of Hero. Who didn't have anything in the wall. Which is honestly kind of tragic. Oh, and the links are full. There's four deaths over there for defense. There's two deaths over here for defense. Hero is a little bit busy fighting the main army over here on the right side. To keep track of his defenses. He's gonna send his adepts in, he's gonna be content with it. Ravages are popping out to try and deal with the army of Hero who's uh, slowly but steadily recovering from the awkward position he found himself in. More wings are going to be sent out. There's still nothing on the wall, by the way. And there's nothing to defend this base over here. In the end, the army of Hero will also be pushed back. This is a victory on everything that matters for Solar. And two Immortals will fall down as well. Almost close to be a fourth one. I think if all links actually were on top of these Immortals, that would have been a dead Immortal, but it doesn't really even matter. Solar is sending his army in and there's nothing in the way of defense. These five adepts definitely not gonna cut it. I do feel like Solar got this game in the bank. There is a way to kill the army that he has been building up. More and more adepts are being made by Hero to try and keep up. But this is just not cutting it. And that's trying to get behind the Ravagers, trying to snipe a couple of the probes being sent out into the fight. But Hero realizes that this is a desperate position. The one single immortal doing its best. Its best. It's just not enough. Solo, this game number two. Here in the bottom left hand corner, the blue Protoss is currently spawning. Losing the first 
set. Well, today's event. It doesn't want this to happen anymore. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, it's hero. His opponent in the red from Kaizi Gaming. Looking to get the double up punch and get two in a row. Can you do it? It's solar. The ready save from Kaizi Gaming? I think I did. No way. Solar is getting a natural? Oh, this is so weird. Uh, by the way, it's, it was hardware. <laughs> what I was talking about. You don't really always want to send your probe out. Like, hardware is pretty big. Doesn't really look like Hero wants to send his probe out from the get-go. He <laughs> instantly spawns, so... He's gonna be keeping them home for the time being and just going up for a scout. Maybe but now. What did self combust over here? Whatever. Was the repair bot the little thingy, the critter? I didn't think they could auto combust, but I was wrong. I really was wrong. And where is a very distracting map? That's uh, there's a lot of effects going on all times. I highly suggest to play with uh, map effects off <laughs> if you play on Outwire. But yeah, casting is a different thing. Because honestly, look how pretty those effects are. I mean, the, the, this looks good. It's target opener again. Hero falls back into place to where he felt the most comfortable on. Clean bot, that's how it's called. Oh, that's two of them. No. We're clean bot. The other one? Alright. Better. Oracle first. Alright. Here we're pretty much resetting to the build, the exact same build he did in the previous game, in uh, game one, not in the previous game, sorry. Oh, uh, which is the free Oracle opener, which grants you an outstanding amount of map control, first of all, which is the most important thing, of course, in a big map such as Outlier, getting map control can be super significant, and uh, nets you the ability to actually get something going in the way of fence just due to the Pulsar Beam activation, and uh, due to the map control you were able to accrue before, you can actually go. Um, you can actually skip the robot altogether and uh, go right into your Twilight Tech to try and get your key gateway units out and uh, get your explosion of gateways out as well. Hero, you really need units in your wall, by the way. There's no escaping that. Like, is he going to lose another probe? Yes, he is. Definitely is. Solar, you don't... Alright, he kills another probe, but... He probably could have killed at least a couple more. That was weird. His fair base is a very safe to defend for him. There's nothing to be afraid of. And he has oracles on the field. He can send some... Yeah, as I was saying, you can send something out. It's gonna be the three adepts. I'm gonna try to double it up with the two oracles. To try and deal some damage. Actually, the three oracles and a fourth one incoming. So it's a four oracles variation that we've seen in game one as well, which uh, can be very good if um, there isn't enough defense on uh, all of the bases. Which uh, Solar is sadly for uh, Hero really up to. He's gonna lose two queens on us, which hurts a lot of decision. Actually, he's losing a little bit too much. Seven drones and two queens. It's uh. Definitely more than I was expecting. Lanes are being sent uh, being sent out to try and counter... Oh, yeah, Hero learned from his mistakes, huh? 
He has something in his god forbid wall. Yeah, that's will fun themselves a little bit in the open. There's no shield battery to defend over here. One of the oracles will need to fly back home, activate the poster beam, and keep these lanes down. Shield battery gets cancelled, and it's down to the oracle to try and deal with the lanes. They will actually sneak past into the main. They're pretty fast boys. They will try to get another probe. Will not manage. Poster beam is a deadly tool. And Hero wants to show why, right here in the main base, by killing two more drones, maybe four, not just a bit. Dropping down a revelation as well, and this was overall a trade pretty much in favor of the Protoss player. Yeah, I still lost five adepts, but look how much damage he dealt. Nine drones with two queens going down. In the early game, it hurts really a lot. You can see it in the quick spread of Solar that he just now Retaking foot and uh, of course having to keep all of your queens back home to inject those archeries definitely doesn't help your quick spread a lot. Four uh, that actually two adapts and two zealots and the four oracles are gonna ensure Hero pretty much never loses map control. Now that ten roaches are popping out, sort of finally wants to get something going to cut up on this fourth base. Charge is done, and these charge lots are looking for blood. Hero getting the double robo, so not going into the Templar Archive stack with the Tower Council. He's going instead into, where are the robots? Into double robo attack to try and get as many disruptors on the field as possible before adding up some uh, later game units. These struggles are kind of trapped. They could bring the fight to the queens and uh, yeah, they will do that immediately. Put in a position in which they will indeed let the healthiest one tank. Two drones and a queen will fall. So they're getting the inflation in supply due to the um, roaches being produced. There's even a drop alert incoming. Maybe Solar wants to go for a move out with queens? Doesn't really have a lot of queens. That's the real problem of this kind of stuff. But he will. He will get a move out with queens. There's an overseer over here. And oh well, that, that is a terrible moment to move out, I think. The yeah, drop lord will stay hidden. Actually, it's uh, it's very difficult to distinguish this from normal overlord with this skin. Yes, he has the three things, but it's not that easily distinguishable. Over here, here comes the army of Solar from so many different positions, streaming from all kind of places. The Zealots are going to be chased down by so many Roaches while the Ravages are eating over here on the right side. Of course, there's all of Oracles with Pulsar Beam activation trying to snipe down as many Ravages as possible. Hero doing such a great job at countering back that's five Immortals with his army full. Four of the Queens, all of them, immediately full. Without really being able to get those transfuses going, Creep was not fast enough. And now, Hero, with just Immortals and Charge Lots, will show Solar the power of Protoss, the Immortals will fight back and the hero will get the match point. As always, like the early game between these two races is never that significant, you just wait for the 7 end score to finish and you just look at it, if it starts warp gate immediately, then you look for a dark console, this is pretty much matchup advices, but whatever, <laughs> you... You wait for look for a Tower Council or a Robo. If it doesn't, this is a target play. Fair and square. Here it comes. Nothing to be surprised. In this stage, I do like that Solar is trying to be a little bit more proactive in the way he keeps scouting going. He tries to send some lanes out on the map, on the map 
something that he has never done before, to keep track of uh, possible proxies since Zero has, has shown us how versatile he can be. And of course, get some scouting information going with just the link without sacrificing anything. He gets through, he sees the Oracle first, and he will sacrifice his link to the probe gods. Goodbye, you little brave link. You were brave enough to see an Oracle in the production. So Hero, back to the strat of game 1 and 3. Can Solar do something about it this time? It requires Solar to play a little bit different in this, uh, in this scenario. Um, what I do like how he decided to play in the previous game, I do feel like it was uh, kind of unforgivable how much damage he took previous to that stage. I do like that he tries to play a little bit aggressive, but he wasn't really in a position to do so anymore after taking that much damage. It was a little bit too late with his build. There were already so many mortals on the field, so many key upgrades for Hero. He was trying to play aggressive himself, so... That kind of timing was bound to fail. This time, he has something on going on the map. He has these links constantly scouting, constantly putting pressure. And while the Oracle are a big scare card, the Adepts shouldn't be a scare card anymore with links being out on the map instead of back home to try and defend. And look at this, this is what these oracles need to go back home. Yeah, that will be not surrounded and uh, will be shading into the mineral line. In the end, it looks like I was wrong. The oracles don't need to fly back home. That base was still slightly delayed with the probe going down, the pylon going down and the shield battery going down. So, or it was too balanced, I don't, I don't really even know. Oracle scouting the Roach Warren, flying through everything and not doing much. At this time, this is a perfect early game from Solar. This is exactly what I was looking for by him. He's not cutting corners, he's playing as vanilla as possible. He's getting his Roach Warren, he's setting up the pieces for a strong timing attack. Now that he has all the speed, he can be at that uh, drop alert play we've seen before. And he's getting those roaches out on the field as well. While keeping his opponent completely honest, sniping down adepts left and right, forcing his opponent to spend resources on units that he didn't really want to have. And now that their five oracles are on the field, there still has to be a single... Well, one drone died. There still has to be one than, more than one drone kill. And look at these queens. They will just snipe down one oracle completely for free hero a little bit of a blunder performance but solar really on top of his opponent right now losing four drones for no reason at all though this is the kind of things that he has to avoid at all costs the games is still pretty much easy to lose he's in a very very good spot he has a drop alert incoming the oracles will scout this incoming but the queens are already marching through the middle and there's already links fighting over here at the fur base Drop loads are ready to fly, they collect the queens, and they're heading out, there's one of them over here ready to spread some creep. The oracles are trying to snipe down the ravagers before the queens get into action. One of the oracles immediately falls down, the other oracles are trying to stake off as their lives, but here comes the first transfuse, the creep tumors are being popped down. The oracles are ready to spread some more creep, it doesn't really look like Hero has the cleanest defense this time, not as good as last time, this is much faster execution. From Solar, the Queens are ready to transfuse the Ravagers back to full health, and the army of Ebro melts to pieces. Game number five, everybody, is what we got. Because Solar gets the equalizer. What can we expect out of this game? Blackburn is a is a good first full map. You can get many things going. Things start to get messy on Blackburn once you get to four or five bases. Then, uh, like, control on the northernmost side of the map becomes a little bit more important. And that's where things get messy, because uh, the whole way this map is made is kind of uh, weird. Rocks, rocks, 
Inhibited zones, ramp, ramp, and then absolutely no obstacle at all besides this statue. Like, yes, there's another ramp with a base over here, but the middle is so open and yet so vulnerable to surrounds. It starts to become a thing for uh, zero players once these rocks get broken. At this stage, pretty much no single race in the game can keep up with the amount of map pressure the zero player can get through. So this is usually played as a late game map for Zerg and a very early map for Terran against Zerg. And for Protoss, it kind of, uh, it kind of gets in one of two ways. You either want to go for a timing attack and try to get something done with double robo like we've seen in the third game of this series or you go into um, uh, into early stargate and see so Solar once again trying to be oh and key Anki, no. All right, he's back. <laughs> the one adept will uh, shine in Jojo pose and then shade out or not. So it's a Void Ray opener this time, on the side of Hero, mixing stuff up. Like I was saying before, there's a, one of, a, of the two options you got is trying to get the later game tech ongoing for you. So it might be um, a little bit more of a defensive game on the side of Hero, which, uh, which is a first. Today, as a whole, not just in the series, even against Bian, he always played super aggressive. And uh, seeing go for, go for a Void Ray, to try and stop these lanes from uh, getting the map control that Solar was able to achieve in a previous game might be very significant. If Solar did, doesn't manage to get that map control, he might also decide not to play aggressive. Since this is Blackburn, getting the gold base is more important than denying your opponent some uh, little bits of mining if you can kill him because if, if you can kill him he will just get the golden and if he gets the golden then the kills he got will not even matter that much he will getting all of the units he can get into the stargate and we'll go into phoenixes and the second stargate and as i was saying just a couple minutes ago he decided to go for the second of the two choices no timing attack with double robo Instead, going heavy into Stargate and trying to cut the chase into the later stages with uh, stronger units, maybe even an early uh, Fleet Beacon, if it comes to that. Solar on the other side, a lair at a pretty early timing is going to drop a Roach Warren at 5 minutes. She's not a defensive Roach Warren, but well, not a, 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 an aggressive Roach Warren. She'll be a defensive one. He's still getting lots and lots of drones, both players posturing against each other, both players trying to just not lose for the time being. But Roaches are a unit that sooner or later will be used aggressively. You cannot stay on Roaches forever, you cannot keep those Roaches just for defense, because those Roaches will be dead supply the minute it gets the tier 3 units. And for that's shading in. And uh, this time Linz will try to get us around. In the end, the Phoenixes will be flying through and get a queen up in the sky, lifted up. The double stagget not really producing any more Phoenixes, which is uh, weird. The night is warming coming instead from Solar, quite underneath the eyes of Hero. So. All I predicted is kind of going to heck. Because uh, Solar is getting a Nidus Ward. The Nidus Network. And he wants to be very aggressive with that. While Hero, being countered completely by the Nidus Network, 
due to having a double target play, he's heading immediately into Robo Bay to maybe try and uh, have some kind of um, Phoenix Colossi play. This Void Ray will find the Nidus Worm before he goes up, and uh, as they often say, the first Nidus Worm is the most important of them all. Stopping the first equals to delaying his attack by it. An insane amount of time. Second, Ninus Worm will go up over here, but there's already Phoenixes there, ready to greet the first few Ravagers popping out and lift them up in the sky, or even the Queens, if it comes to that. So many Queens, though. There's not a lot of crit was being spread over here in the main, is the real deal, though. Can Hero keep up with this? Solar with a good old Ninus Worm, and a Ninus Worm in the main. Will indeed complete, and this is gonna be rough for Hero. How do you deal with this? The answer is simple you recall into your main base and you pray that your opponent doesn't send units into the other side. Recall gets issued, but there's already creep tumors being spread over here by the one queen that pop out before anything else. The purification of actually it's something, but it's not like Solar doesn't have a lot of reinforcements available over here in this location. What's in the Nidus? Roaches and Leans. They can be sent here, they can be sent into the third. The most important thing is that Solar is fighting with Queens right now off creep. He needs to back up a little bit to get those transfuses on going. Here they go, here they come to transfuse, the spore colors are getting into position, but so will the disruptors dropping down the purification novas where they hurt the most. Solar really trying his best to break through the defenses of Hero, and Hero with the phoenixes will keep these queens honest while the disruptors get in with the shots as soon as Hero buys enough time for incel to send his key units in. It doesn't look like Solar is breaking in and the last few queens will be indeed killed by these raptors, stalkers and immortals alike. Hero is your champion for today with a 3-2 victory over Solar.